In this lecture, we will explore multi-body parts. By a multi-body part, we mean a part with more than one separate body. So what is shown on the left is a one-body part, and what is shown on the right is a multi-body part. This is keeping in mind that a multi-body part is different than an assembly. In this lecture, we will explore different concepts relating to multi-body parts, like what are they, what are some of their advantages, and how we can use them. To explain this clearly, we'll model this simple coffee table. You can download this drawing from the download section linked to this lecture. Our plan would be to create the four legs first, and then create the top. So let's get started. First, we'll switch our measurement system to inches. Now we'll start creating the four legs. So I'm going to select the top plane and create my first base for the first leg. This is going to be two inches and the other side will be equal to it. The distance between each two legs is 24. So to create this distance, I'm going to use center lines. I'm going to create one like this and another one like this, and then use smart dimension. This is going to be 24 and this is going to be 24 as well. So this fully defines our sketch. Now I want to mirror this sketch to the other side, the bottom one, to create another leg. So I'm going to use mirror entities. Entities to mirror is this square we made, and I'm going to mirror it about this center line. I'm going to press OK, and then I'm going to extrude that. The height for each leg is 10, so I'm going to write 10 and then click OK. At this point, we have already created a multi-body part. And the criteria is as following. First, we have started this model in a part file, meaning when we open the new file, we chose a part. And the other criteria is we have two bodies. This is body number one, and this is body number two. And both those bodies are separate, meaning they are not connected. And this is what makes a multi-body part, as simple as that. And if we go to the design tree, you will find this new folder popped up, and it says solid bodies. If I expand that, you're going to see two bodies, and those represent the two bodies we just created. Now to continue my model, I want to copy those two legs to the other side to make four legs for our table. So this time I'm going to use the feature mirrors and for the mirror face I'm going to select the right plane and for features to mirror this time we don't have features to mirror rather we have bodies to mirror. So we're going to go down and we will see bodies to mirror so I'm going to expand that and I'm going to select my two bodies. So back to the design tree, I'm going to select this body and this other body. We can see the preview, this is what we want. I'm going to click OK. Now if you notice the design tree again, you notice we have four separate bodies and those are our four legs for the table. So now we can go ahead and create our top. To do that, I'm going to select this face as a sketch plane. And then I'm going to create a rectangle that connects two corners of the legs. So this is basically our top. And it's already fully defined. I'm going to features and I'm going to extruded boss. And this should be extruded to two inches. Now before we apply this feature, I'm going to bring your attention 
to this option here. This option says merge results. Every time we do an extruded bus, you will see this option. And traditionally, or so far, we've always left this option checked. So with this option checked, this extrusion, the top of the table, will be merged with the four legs. And when that happens, we will form a single body part. So let's go ahead and try that out. So I'm going to leave this checked and then I'm going to click OK. Now, if we go back to the design tree, you will notice that that folder we had for separate bodies is no longer there because now all the bodies we have got merged into one. However, we don't really want that. We want to keep the separate bodies. So I'm going back to my extruded boss and go to edit the feature and uncheck merge results and then click OK. Now the solid bodies folder is still there and now we have one more body added to it which represent the top of the table. And now we can treat those separate bodies in different ways. So I can right click on this last body we created and we can hide it, we can change transparencies or we can isolate it. And what isolate means is basically hiding all the other bodies. So I'm going to exit this mode and I'm going to return that to non-transparent. Now I have this table. However, assuming I want to send this design to a manufacturer and I don't want to send him this table as a whole. Rather, I want to send him the model of the leg separate from the model for the top so he can manufacture the top separately from the legs. And to do this, I can save those bodies separately. Before I do that, I'm going to save this part we created. So I'm going to save that as table. This is the full part. And now I'm going to the folder, solid bodies, right click. And we have an option here that says save bodies. So I'm going to click on that and it will give me this interface. Now what I want to do is I want to save one leg and one top. So if I click on the first one, this is body one, and it represents one of the legs as shown in the model. I want to save that, so I'll go and use this box and I will check it. And then I can double click and I will name this as leg. Now I want to save the top, which is body three. So again, I'm gonna double click on that and I'm going to name it top and save. So I've already saved those two parts. I can click OK and it will give me this warning sign. Basically, this asks me about the measurement system. Remember when we started our part, I changed the measurement system from millimeters, the default setting, to inches. So now SolidWork is asking me if I want to change that measurement system to inches in those derived parts as well. And yes, I do want that, so I'm going to click Yes. Now if I minimize this, you will notice I do have two separate parts. This part here represent the top and this part here represent the leg. And if you go back to the folder you saved them in, you will see those two parts saved separately. So let's minimize everything. And when we do that, you'll have our three parts listed at the bottom, the table, the base table, and the separate leg and the separate top. So for now, let's go back to our base table. So as we have seen so far, multi-body parts can be a powerful tool to design static objects like tables or weldments or static structures because we can easily link dimensions together. So in this scenario, we were able to link the dimensions in the top of the table to the dimensions of the four legs, 
without having to take notes on paper and then design each part separately. However, keep in mind that multi-body parts do not replace assemblies. In fact, any dynamic interactions of parts can only be done using assemblies and not using multi-body parts. So when working with those, keep in mind all the limitations you will be having. This concludes our main discussion of multi-body parts. However, before we end this lecture, we're going to talk about updates. What happens if all of a sudden I want to, to update this top? So now this is a full solid top. Now I want to have a hole in the middle of it. So I'm going to sketch and I will draw a rectangle and then go to features and cut that through. So now I have this hole in the middle. Will this hole update into the top we just saved as a separate part? Let's go ahead and check this out. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to enlarge the top. And as we can see, the top was not updated with the hole. However, what if I really wanted to update that hole? I can go back to my original table and in the design tree, you will notice there is an entry for save bodies. And this entry represents the instance in which we saved our bodies separately. So whatever feature we apply after will not be reflected and those bodies saved. So if I want this additional cut extrude to be reflected in the bodies we saved, I can simply drag it up the design tree to be above the save body entry. And then I can save and rebuild. And if I minimize that and open my top, you will notice the hole got updated. So this addresses updating solid parts. If I make an adjustment here in this separate part, it will not be updated in the original part. So keep this in mind. So this concludes our lecture on multi-body parts. Key points are multi-body parts are a very powerful tool to easily design and connect dimensions, especially for static structures like a table. However, it is by no mean a substitution for assemblies. Any dynamic interaction of parts can only be examined using assemblies and not multi-body parts. So while we're here, you can go ahead and experiment on those features by your own.